Hey guys, what's up? You've probably been wondering about this Uta Wareru Mono series for a while, haven't you? Maybe you've seen these games here and there and you wonder if they're connected, what kind of games they are. What, what's this? What's this Uta Wareru Mono stuff? Well, luckily for you, I'm here to tell you all about it. This is a series that is strongly, super strongly recommended. So let's begin. So the Uta Water no Mono series is actually a media franchise. There's anime series, there's manga series, there's visual novels, there's etc. But the stuff that I want to focus on today are the video games. There are five video games in this series, three main games which comprise a trilogy, and two little spin-offs which are like the Dynasty Warrior style of gameplay. We'll get to those later. Now the ones you've probably seen more often are these two, which are actually a duology, Mask of Deception and Mask of Truth. However, there's one little game missing here that I don't own physically, and that is Prelude to the Fallen, which is the very first Uta Wareru Mono game in existence. And that's the one you need to start with, oh yeah! These games are like the Trail series, you need to play the first one first before you jump into the others. Now, Uta Wareru Mono Prelude to the Fallen was released for PC back in 2002, developed by two companies, Leaf and Aqua Plus. It never came out of Japan, and it also got a bunch of ports for consoles like the PlayStation 2, the PSP, all of them exclusive to Japan. However, sometime later they decided to remaster this very same game for the PlayStation 4, the PS Vita, and Steam. But they did this after they had released the sequels, which are Mask of Deception and Mask of Truth, and that is where the confusion starts. Well, to make things simple for you, let's just say that due to the small success Mask of Deception and Truth got, they remastered the game, the first game, to release it overseas for everybody. But like I said, you need to start with Prelude to the Fallen first. So let's start with that one first. So this is a strategy RPG. It follows the adventures of an amnesiac protagonist who wakes up in the middle of a world inhabited by anthropomorphic creatures, you know, human-looking characters with ears and tails, like animal ears and tails. However, you know, the world they inhabit seems to resemble a little bit the feudal Japan, so it's kind of medieval. The protagonist, you know, doesn't remember his name, so the nurse who finds him, you know, which is um, some kind of apothecary, you know, living in a humble small village with her sister and her grandmother, so they nurse him back to life and they named him Hakuolo. And so, you know, this protagonist finds out that there's something wrong with him, that there's something different with him, and little by little, you know, he starts getting involved in a war, he becomes a strategist, he becomes pretty much the leader of a rebellion against the oppressive empire and whatnot. So this game, in terms of storytelling, it takes a lot of influence from games like Suikoden. I mean, you don't recruit 108 characters like in Suikoden, but you, do, you recruit characters, you build an army, etc. But there are no gameplay mechanics about that. The majority of the gameplay will be just reading the dialogue, reading the scenes, and then playing the strategy RPG battles. You will have a base of operations here, where you'll be able to choose which scene to watch next, or if you want to play some free missions or training missions to train your characters, equip your characters with the accessories you've gained after battle, you know, these accessories help increase this or that, the usual stuff. You can also equip healing items because there's only one healer in the entire game, so these items will come in handy, of course. And during battle, you'll have a bunch of characters placed on grids under your command, sometimes 7, sometimes 8, sometimes up to 10, depending on the mission. Now there's a zeal bar right there that you need to fill up, we'll get to that in a bit. First and foremost, this is a very simple strategy RPG, perfect for beginners, as this is a very easy game. There's only normal and hard difficulties in all three games, and normal difficulty is pretty easy, you know, it's not that easy, but it's easy, it's balanced. Hard difficulty is obviously harder, it's more challenging, and if you are very experienced in strategy RPGs, I do recommend playing these games on hard. Characters, both party members and enemies alike, have elemental weaknesses. The game actually tells you, you know, which characters are advantageous to others and which ones have a disadvantage in elemental speaking. Regardless of their weapon and their equipment, they have elemental strengths and weaknesses, but you'll be fine because it, the game always tells you which characters are weak to this type of character or this other character and so on. Now let's talk about the seal bar. 
So, this is a combo-based strategy RPG, believe it or not. Your characters attack on combos, whether it's magic attack or whether it's uh, physical attack, especially physical attacks. Magic attacks are usually just one or two attacks, or generally just one. But all physical attacks of all kind have this combo-based system. You need to click the button at the right time, the action button at the right time, to make your attacks work and to fill up the seal bar. Some characters have like two, three, four, five different types of attacks. So if you click the button, your character will attack continuously. However, if you just click only once, your character will stop attacking. But if you click at the right time, you will increase the seal bar and once it fills up to 100, your character will either execute or be able to execute a special attack or a very powerful extra attack. So overall, there's nothing convoluted, nothing complex about this battle system, but I love it because it's just simple. As much as I love some complex and deep mechanics in JRPGs, I also love simple yet effective mechanics, ones that are easy to understand, easy to get into, and really, really fun with responsive characters, responsive attacks, you know, no RNG BS here. So everything is well developed here, you know. Congratulations to Leaf and Aqua Plus, you know, you nailed it. This is a fantastic strategy RPG. And like I said, guys, there's a reason why these games have a mature rating. Yes, they have fan service, you know, they have silliness, they have slice of a lot of slice of life comedy and whatnot. But if you can put up with that nonsensical amount of dialogue and what that slice of life comedy and silliness, you will be rewarded by extremely unexpected and dark plot twists, mature situations, adult and political plots, you know. These are incredibly well-written stories, you know. My mind was blown when I played them. Like many of you, I was expecting these games to be just silly and dumb with fan service and whatnot. But oh my god, they blew me away. Excellent narrative in these games. And the other two, the sequels to Prelude to the Fallen, are no exception. In fact, they're even better. Mask of Deception and Mask of Truth are the direct sequels to Prelude to the Fallen. They take place several years after the events of Prelude to the Fallen in another part of the continent. That means different characters, different heroines, and of course a different amnesiac protagonist who is also named Haku. But it's not the same character as before, it's a different protagonist. Some of the characters from Prelude to the Fallen come back in these games and Mask of Truth, which is the third and final game in the trilogy, spoils the heck out of you. So that's why it's very important to play Prelude to the Fallen first. However, Deception and Truth are pretty much the same game cut into two parts, Volume 1 and one, Volume 2, like Trails in the Sky 1 and 2, Trails from Zero and Azure, Trails of Cold Steel 1 and 2, you get the idea. The gameplay is very similar in this duology as it was in Prelude to the Fallen. Once again, we are met with a strategy RPG, grid-based, where you can position a bunch of characters in different formations and start the battle. Items are gone here, but thankfully, there are more healers, there are more characters here who can use healing spells. Accessories are back, you can equip up to two, three, four of them depending on the character. One thing I forgot to mention about Prelude to the Fallen, which is also featured in these other two games, is the after every battle you'll get experience points, it doesn't matter if your characters participated in battle or not, there is no permadeath here, even if a character died in battle they return to the next one, and they also gain experience even death. You also get BP points, which are basically skill points, you know. After you level up you get a bunch of points that you can allocate to your characters. Allocate, I'm sorry. <laughs> but the combat is pretty much the same, except for one simple detail which makes the combat in Mask of Deception and Truth a little bit better and more intuitive and more fun than in Prelude to the Fallen. In here, you gotta click once again the, the action button at the right time, but instead of increasing the seal bar, what you're gonna do is perform or execute critical attacks. And in here, you do need to click the button at the right time so your characters can do more damage. They'll do their combos no matter what, even if you don't click the buttons, but if you click it at the right time, or sometimes for spells, you need to hold the button and release it at the right time to create a critical attack. That is awesome, you know, it just makes you train yourself, you know, and get better, get good enough, you know, to click the buttons at the right time every time so your characters can do more damage. And once again, once you fill the seal bar up to 100, your characters will be able to either execute a special attack or a combination attack, etc. Amazing combat in this game and amazing writing in all three of them. 
oh my god, you know, I can't believe I missed out on these games so much. I remember giving them uh, a C, a C, man, on my tier list PS Vita video. Holy, I mean, what an idiot, you know, these games, separately, they're excellent games that should be on the A tier. Together, all three of them form a badass masterpiece. Kuon, the main heroine of Mask of Deception and Truth, you know, she has become one of my all-time favorite female protagonists in JRPGs. And for a guy who has played hundreds of JRPGs in his life, that's gotta have some weight, right? That means Kuon, yeah, <laughs> that's how much I loved Kuon. Amazing cast of characters in these games, man. Now, you're probably wondering, what, are, what the hell are these games? Uta Wareru Mono Zan. There's two games so far. All two of them are based on Mask of Deception and Mask of Truth. I only own the first one, but these are the Musou style of games that I mentioned at the beginning. The ones that are inspired by Dynasty Warriors, you fight against hordes of enemies with your favorite characters, up to four characters can participate in battle, there are some small RPG elements, they level up and can equip accessories and distribute skill points, just like in the original games. But story-wise, it's the exact same story as in Deception and Truth, just told in a nutshell, like narrowed down, like shrunk, but obviously that also means that it is absolutely necessary to play these other games first before this action RPG, action style, Musou style of spin-offs. Yeah. Are they any good? Yes, they are. This first one, it surprised me. The camera, the controls, the combat, the collision detection, the graphics, everything's amazing. The one thing I didn't like is that the 3D models they look kind of ugly and weird, but you know, I don't really care about that, you know, everything else is amazing. So, this Musou style of uh, spin-off is also strongly recommended. Once again, let me stress that out, don't be fooled by the amount of nonsensical and fan service and silliness and slice of life dialogue here, you know, you will be rewarded with amazing, incredibly dark and mature and upsetting, upsetting plot twists, man. These are, these, these are amazing stories, amazing universe for an amazing trilogy. Uta Wareromono, that's it, now you know what the hell it is, and now you know that it is strongly recommended by yours truly. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends. See you next time!